Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In adjusting protrusive, the adjustment is primarily concerned with achieving a contact only on the anterior teeth. In a patient that has a complete complement of teeth, it is usually quite unlikely for them to have a protrusive interference because of the usual harmony in the occlusal plane between the upper and lower teeth. However, in patients that lose first molars and have a corresponding mesial drift of the second molar or the third molar or hypereruption, it is quite common for them to develop a protrusive interference in the posterior area. What one would do would be to move the cast in the protrusive excursion, checking to see that it is smooth and even and that there is no contact in the posterior. Now this is slightly rough. This is because the teeth are not uniformly contacting in the front. If we turn the cast around and check into the posterior area, Looking at the back teeth in the protrusive excursion, we find that there is no contact between the posterior teeth. So in terms of the prime requisite for the protrusive adjustment in this particular case, there are no contacts in the posterior. The contacts are only in the anterior area. However, so that you can see how to do a protrusive adjustment should it become necessary, we will assume that there is some mobility of the front teeth in this particular cast, although there is no mobility of the teeth on the cast, and that the teeth that are making the initial and protrusive guiding functions are slightly mobile. So upon marking it with the paper and opening the cast, looking at the maxillary teeth, we find that we have on tooth number eight and tooth number seven, we have the contacts. Now when we do the adjustment of protrusive we do not grind on the lower incisor teeth. The reason we do not grind on the lower incisor teeth is that they are the uh, centric stops or the uh, hammers that are needed to maintain contact whereas the anvil uh, is the lingual surface of the upper anterior teeth and we will remove a small amount to recontour the lingual aspect of this incisal edge. Now, as I say, this is usually uh, not done unless the teeth are mobile or the occlusal analysis warrants the removal of this because grinding on someone's front teeth can be very uh, upsetting because of the shortening of the front teeth that may develop. In these particular adjustments, there will be no apparent shortening from the when viewed from the labial, but in some adjustments that one has to perform on periodontally weakened teeth, the teeth must be shortened and you have to prepare the patient adequately for this kind of, um, even though they may appear to understand at that first time that they look in the mirror, uh, they may not be satisfied with what you have done. And adequate preparation is, is very important. Again, I adjust a little bit more these particular areas Remarking. And now we can notice that there is um, contact here and here and here and here and here uh, on these particular teeth with that minimal amount of adjusting. And if we look at it head on, uh, I best should take out the pen from this so that we can see it better. Without the pin being in the way. And we slide into protrusive excursions and now it is a more even contact across the front. And we would then assume that, that this would remove the 
unfavorable trauma to number seven and number eight that were causing the difficulty. What happens now in terms of guidance is that in the petrusive function, the lower first bicuspid rides against the distal aspect of the cuspid on this side, in addition to the front teeth, and on this side, the similar occurrence is happening. So as I said, this kind of adjustment, if these teeth were not mobile in the front, uh, no protrusive adjustment would be performed on this cast. But for the sake of showing you what would be necessary, we are assuming that the teeth that are in protrusive contact in the anterior on this particular cast are slightly mobile. And in, this, in case of this finding, some adjustment of the protrusive is necessary to remove this traumatic force. At this point, we have completed all of the adjustments of this cast. The cast is now in, the occlusion rather, is in harmony with the musculature of this patient if we had a patient um, for these particular casts. And um, the only thing that would be required would be to check on this after about a week or so to make sure that the occlusion has maintained its stability. Any further changes would be altered slightly, and uh, the occlusion would be expected to maintain its stability because the rules of occlusal adjustment have been correctly followed. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.